My name is Sachin, and I'm here with Dr. Jayshree Lambert from Canada. She is an Ayurvedic doctor, and she's here to talk to us about mental health and chakras. So, namaste, Dr. Jayshree Lambert. Namaste, Sachin. Lovely to get into this topic a little bit together. Yes, it's a very um, noticeable one that everyone knows about. And... Um, Speaking of mental health in the pandemic and what pe people have been um, having some um, unfortunate negative influences from being uh, away from people, etc., environments. When we look at the word uh, chakra and what chakra is, um, what is the what is a chakra and how can this help people with their mental health? Beautiful question. You know, chakra is part of the ancient Sanskrit language, meaning a wheel, actually. Now, means a, an energy that turns in a circle like a whorl or a gyre, right? Sometimes I call it an eddy. Uh, you know, water moves in little circular forms that's um, called an eddy. So this uh, chakra system is part of the aura, part of the uh, respiratory field and immune field of the person, say one arm's length all around. And uh, these currents have been um, noted to flow in particular directions. So right side will move up the body on the right, left side down. And the meeting of these uh, opposite currents of emotional energy, astral energy, uh, forms these chakras or uh, wheels. You can feel the circular movement of the energy. So when the emotions and mental anguish, like loneliness, like um, confusion, uh, like um, betrayal, uh, trauma, these energies now consume the entire person's experience, body, mind, and consciousness. So we need a way out. So if we sit quietly and ponder this invisible anatomy, uh, the root chakra, muladhara chakra, the base of the pelvis, uh, the uh, sahasrara chakra, at the navel latitude, the seat of the self, then the solar plexus, the Manipura, so-called city of gems at the, at the uh, junction of the uh, ribs and right below, just at the sort of gut punch area right there, solar plexus and many people will store unresolved emotions here. So bringing an awareness here, for example, to solar plexus can be most helpful. Then next up, Anahata, the uh, uh, unstruck sound, the place where the bell sound begins in the body. And that bell sound is a healing sound that uplifts the soul from an anguished heart, feeling down, feeling low, um, feeling blue, whereas it's supposed to feel green, right? Gr green color dominates in the heart. Green color is the widest band of the color spectrum. And it's also the widest range of human experience is this heart chakra has the greatest um, effect of the greatest range, if you will. Uh, so cardiopulmonary um, informant of the distribution of prana, distribution of blood, etc. Then on a, this um, Vishuddha chakra, the throat chakra, you see many people can't say, name, the feeling that they're having. So moment we name it, we have now reconfigured the auric field and the chakra system. We can feel that in the sensory apparatus, vagus nerve. These are all working together to tell us that we're either happy or unhappy, you know, sort of primordial unconscious type term, terms, subconscious terms. Yeah, so then third eye, Ajna Sakra, Chakra, the seat of knowledge. Now, this is where we find our way out. This aperture, this doorway, third eye, 
very important doorway out of darkness and into the light. This is the doorway. So focusing the attention here. Here we have the knowledge of illumination of our path, Ajna, the, the understanding. And now we can understand our way upward. So now, by now then, the mind is trained to be the servant and not the master. By now, the um, uh, unwinding of past unresolved feelings and current unresolved feelings, now it can make its way through this chakra system into the higher consciousness, moving again out of the heart, uh, out of the uh, thousand petaled lotus at the crown, into the rest of the universe, the rest of the creation, which is now all inclusive. Now we're not lonely anymore. We belong. We're part of the, what we did was we isolated ourselves through forgetfulness. The Ayurvedic concept of mental suffering is that we forgot God. We forgot the divine. And what that tells from this ancient philosophy is that what we need to do is remember. Mm. So that remembrance, the cell memory, the memory of the of being, being light and sound, right? Every human being is light and sound. So it's within us to know that uh, transcendence. It is the destiny of each and every life. We all have to go through these dark passages in order to recognize what is light. I think that's such a great way to uh, just put it in a nutshell. Thank you so much. One question I wanted to ask you, because this is a hot topic as well, it's the Kundalini. So we see a lot of people doing Kundalini yoga um, and it's really that a very powerful and strengthening practice. So the Kundalini is also a part of our chakras. And would you say that this is, and would you encourage people who are looking for a source in the modern world, the Western world, to potentially investigate there and work with the Kundalini energy? Beautiful question. Yes, the 3HO, Happy Healthy Holy Movement, is uh, very uh, strong and, and highly knowledgeable in the practices, breathing practices, yoga practices, other advanced practices where the mind is purified, emotions are purified. We overcome, we transform. Uh, so kundalini meaning a type of life force, the coiled energy in the first chakra that's going to do this purification if the creation uh, behaves as a shuttle. So we're told that the um, movement of uh, the, the creation as a cloth, as a shuttle, as a back and forth movement between North Pole and South Pole, generating the physicality of the body, the actual, um, you know, the, the actual physical body in which all this journey is happening, this spiritual journey, but we are expected to lose our way in that we do have free choice. So it's not unusual that we do lose our way. What would be unusual is stay lost because all the forces of creation are supporting, whether worldly, although we, it seems as though they're not. And that's what the person's involved in is the seam part, the transitory part, the illusion part the part that's not real, it's not going to stand up to something permanent like unconditional love, right? Because it's transitory. So leaving aside all transitory phenomena and staying with that which is reliable, having relationship with the light, with the permanence, the all in all, if you will, people will use different names for it, use your own so that it means something to you. But this daily meditation is our personal way out. That is great. And I think that's a great way to end it with our way out from our um, mental anguish or suffering, our pain that we're hurt from is through really breathing and meditation. These old practices are still with us. Uh, unfortunately, we do find complications from chemical medicines that are um, intended to or purported to help with distressed mental states.
But we do find that these complications, particularly constipation, is a deadly factor that actually rules them out as medicines, actual healing substances. Instead, herbs can be helpful, but the breathing, nothing like the breathing, it's always with you. One herb for digestion that you would suggest to all of our friends, what would that be? Uh -huh. One herb for rejuvenating the GI tract, let's think about triphala. Triphala is taken at bedtime. It's a combination of three fruits. It does do rejuvenation of all tissues in due course. So as a long-term single herb, uh, that's a good one. Everybody needs some unique herb, but that one's quite universal as a compound of, of three herbs. Beautiful. Thank you once again for your time and going over how chakras are interrelated to mental health during this present time we're in and how it can be information to source for others. Namaste and thank you. Thank you, Sachin. Namaste. Mm -hmm.